Now here lately, Mama Cat has become fascinated with climbing on the roof. You just wanna stay up there all day? So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. Today is Thursday and we're working down here at the timber frame and more specifically in this room right here. Let me show you what's going on. Here is the main part of the timber frame right here in the middle. That room right there is yet to be built. Me and dad are probably going to start building that one at the end of this month. I need to order my metal for that as well. But today we're focusing on this room. We got our power right there in the corner. Right here we have the wood miser molder. That's the MP260. Guys, that right there is a four-sided molder, and I'm really excited about this machine. It will make lap siding, hardwood flooring. Possibilities are endless with this machine right here, guys. And this room that we're in right now is 12 by 30. And as you can see, it is framed in, it's under roof. I got one window right there. I'll probably put an entry door right over there. And I may put another window right there, I'm not sure. And another one on that side facing the house right there. There's Blue the cat, hello Blue. But what I'm working on today is pretty much just drying in this room. I got my siding right there. That's poplar board and batten. And I'm doing something different with my siding. That's the whole entire focus of today's video. Let me show you what I'm doing. So I've been working right here in this back corner, putting up some bots. Now botson is siding, it's the same thing. And don't ask me how to spell it. But uh, all of the country, people use these different terms. Around here, if you want siding for a barn or a shop or even a house, a lot of sawmills call it botson or siding, same thing. But I've been doing board and bat and poplar. I need to put some batten strips right there, as you can see that the light coming through. But I decided to change it up a bit. Let me show you what I'm doing now. It's a windy day here in Tennessee. I hope the audio is decent here. I mean, it's windy. So right here, we got the siding and this is yellow poplar. And what I've changed is I was doing one by tens on my boards. I'm edging them down to one by eights. And the reason I'm reducing that down to eight inches on the width is because I was having more cupping than I wanted to have, even with the batten strips on here. Now my batten strips, I also increased the size of these to three and a half inches. I was doing two and a half. I think it looks a lot better. But that's how it's going to look right there with the strips on it. And we should be good right there. That's going to be enough power or enough force, hopefully, to keep these boards decently flat right there. All right, guys. Now we're going to head up here to the sawmill and edge some of those boards down to eight inches and make some batten strips. And this is the part of the YouTube videos that you guys never see. Me walking around carrying tripods everywhere. You guys wouldn't believe how many times I gotta stop what I'm doing to move these cameras around. Who's with us here? Oh, it's Mama Cat. Looks like she finally came off the roof. Huh. She's been getting up there every night and coming to the bedroom window and aggravating me to death. She's a very needy cat.
Looks like we got a cat on top of the tractor. Who's up there? Oh, that's Cindy. What are you doing, Cindy? Well, somebody said the other day in one of the videos that they were here to watch the sawmill and not watch the cats. Who don't like cats? All right, guys, real quick here. You see me putting that anchor seal on and that's an extra step, but I think it's necessary, especially with this poplar here. It was sawed about a month ago, so it's still drying out. And by putting the anchor seal on the end right here, I know it takes time, but that's going to prevent end checking while this board is drying on the side of the barn. Right here, guys, is a good example of what will happen if you don't do this. Now, I painted the ends on all these boards with anchor seal, but I did not these first three. And here's what happened because of that. Right there, see that end check right there on the end? On that one also, got lucky on this one right here, but it did check right there on that knot. But that's what will happen if you don't put anchor seal on them, guys. Just takes a few seconds and it makes for a better overall product at the end of the day. These right here are weathered. They've been up for about three months, maybe two months, and I did anchor seal those. You can see the ends right there where the anchor seal makes a little coating on the end. And those are just fine. All right, guys, I think I'm done for the day. I got more done than the video showed, of course. But uh, before we leave, I want to share some comments with you guys over the past probably two or three videos. Harry writes, what flag is in the background? I'm assuming he's referring to the flag up in the shop, and that's the Tennessee state flag. Greg asked, do you have to get a berm permit every time you use your berm pile? Yes, we do. And it's pretty easy. I can do it on my phone. Russ, I can't even pronounce your last name here, buddy. So Russ says, I'm a wood turner by hobby. And when I see you throw the butt ends of sassafras or any other wood into the berm pile, I cringe. Really sad. Well, buddy, I will say this. I've said this a thousand times on this channel. You can't give this stuff away. I try to give it away to people, but nobody won't come get it. And I can't keep it forever. Did y'all hear the muffler on that truck? My goodness, that's loud. And I'm a long way from the main road. I don't know why people do that for. Custom exhaust systems on their trucks. Nobody wants to hear that. Benny asked, what in the world happened to you, man? You look like a Quaker. What's a Quaker? I can't even pronounce this person's name. Does being a lumberjack mean it's necessary to grow beards? I'm not a lumberjack. A lumberjack is like a logger or somebody out in the forest. I'm just a sawyer. Big difference there, buddy. But you're probably right. To be a lumberjack, you probably do need a beard. JS says, have you ever cut any swamp logs? No, I have not. In reference to my last video where I was complaining about the time change, John says, I think Arizona is the only state I know of in the U.S. that does not change time. I think I'm ready to pat my bags. I can't pronounce this name either. You guys and your stream names, I tell you. I'd like to see an update on the tractor. Give us your thoughts, how many hours, lights, and dislikes. Uh, the TYM 574 has 120 hours on it. The only thing I don't like about it I wish it was bigger. That's not the tractor's fault. You always need bigger equipment, guys. It never fails. I always tell people, and I've not done this in the past, and I've felt a uh, victim to it many a times and made bad decisions, but if you decide you want a piece of equipment, a sawmill, table saw, tractor, whatever it is, get your mind set on that one model and go up one grade from that, and you'll be better off in the long run. I've traded so many tractors and skid steers over the years because I didn't go big enough in the first place. That's why I got the Super 70 now, guys. It's top of the line. You can't go any bigger, I don't think, on the portable sawmills. That's why I went ahead this time and got the Super 70 on the wood miser. Uh, B, I can't say your last name either there, B. Sorry about that, people. Great video. Noticed you aren't using the sprayer to put on the anchor seal. The sprayer broke. I used it once or twice in that video, and uh, it just didn't work. You had to pump it as hard as you could push to get anything to come out. And it broke. I think the best way to put that stuff on is with a paintbrush, unfortunately. Eric MDP says, why is there a coffin in your log yard? That's actually not a coffin. It's a flail mower. We'll have that on the tractor sooner than later. Mountain Troll says, say deciduous instead of hardwoods. 
Deciduous is harder to say. I think y'all to say hardwoods. Sir, you sound just like Nicolas Cage, the actor. Have you ever been told that? I have never been told that. I've been told I sound like Billy Bob Thornton, though. I hear that a lot, but never Nicolas Cage. That's a first. 